Everyone likes to drop the word metabolism into a conversation about nutrition, but do you really understand what it means? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name's Richie Kerwin and today we're going to talk all about your metabolism what it means, the role it plays in our body composition, and how it can change. Now, to explain what metabolism is, you need to understand one very important concept. You are made of chemicals. Actually, almost everything you know is made of chemicals. That phone in your hand, chemicals. The skin touching the phone, chemicals. The blood flowing through your veins, chemicals. The DNA in your cells that makes you unique, chemicals. Even the nerve impulses in your head allowing you to see and hear this video and process this information, all chemicals and a little electricity too. Now, why is that important? Well, metabolism is the combination of all the chemical reactions that go on in your body at any one time. And believe me, just to keep you alive, your body needs a ridiculous amount of beautifully coordinated reactions all the damn time. Bear with me on this. You see, you're using chemical reactions to keep your body at a constant temperature right now. You use chemical reactions to break down that protein bar you ate earlier into amino acids, sugars, and fatty acids. You need chemical reactions to transport those amino acids to your muscles, to pass them across your cell membranes, and to turn them into new muscle protein. You need chemical reactions to help you stand up and sit down and lift weights. And you know what a lot of those chemical reactions need? Energy. Our bodies are chemical machines, and it needs energy to keep working. And the energy we eat in the form of food goes to supply a lot of different parts of our metabolism. So what exactly is our metabolism made up of? Your metabolism is made up of four main parts, and these are called your basal metabolic rate, or BMR, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT, your exercise activity thermogenesis, and the thermic effect of food, or TEF, which is sometimes called diet-induced thermogenesis. Your BMR, is the energy that your body uses to maintain all the essential metabolic processes that keep you alive, even when you're at rest and you think you're doing nothing. In fact, for most people, it's BMR that uses the most energy by far of all the different parts of metabolism. Every different part of your body needs a different amount of energy to work. To give you a little idea of what I mean, one kilogram of adipose or fat tissue uses about 4.5 calories per day. Doesn't sound like a lot, right? In comparison, the same weight of muscle needs 13 calories a day to function properly, which is why people rightly say muscle burns more calories than fat. But your muscles have nothing on your brain. One kilogram of brain tissue actually uses 240 calories per day. Pretty impressive, right? Well, not compared to your heart muscle because the same amount of heart tissue burns 440 calories a day, just carrying out its basic functions. Now, obviously, the important thing to remember is that your body usually has a lot more muscle and a lot more fat than other organs. So overall, they contribute a lot more calorie burn to your metabolism. I just thought it'd be pretty cool to know. Moving on. The next biggest user of energy for most people is something called NEAT, which means non-exercise activity thermogenesis. NEAT is all the energy you use for any physical or movement activity that isn't specifically exercise. So things like walking from your car to your office, scratching your head, carrying your groceries, and even fidgeting in your chair, bobbing your head to good music, or even moving your eyes side to side while you read. That's all NEAT. People don't realize just how important NEAT is to their metabolism. In fact, in people who have very adaptive metabolisms, that means their metabolism speeds up and slows down a lot, depending on how much they eat, if you feed them a lot of extra calories, they often move and fidget more, which helps them to burn off some of those extra calories. In other words, their NEAT goes up. On the other hand, if you restrict their calories, their NEAT level often drops and they become a lot less active. Less fidgeting, less head bobbing to music, even fewer facial expressions. They kind of turn into robots, only moving for the most essential tasks. Next, you have the thermic effect of food, or TEF. This is the energy that you burn just processing your food, and that varies based on the macronutrients that you consume. So for example, fat requires the least energy to process. Somewhere from one to 3% of the energy contained in the fat is used for digesting it. Carbs are a little higher at five to 10% of the energy content. And protein is by far the highest with about 20 to 30% of the energy contained in protein being needed to digest and process it. This is a small part of the reason why high protein diets tend to be so effective for fat loss. Some of the calories in the protein are used just by eating it. 
Finally, you have exercise activity thermogenesis, or EAT. This is all the energy that you spend when intentionally exercising, obviously enough. This can vary a lot between people, and in athletes who exercise multiple hours every day, eat can be enormous. That partially explains why, for example, Michael Phelps was able to eat over 8,000 calories a day while training for his last Olympics and still maintain a lean physique. I said partially explains it because his BMR would also have increased a lot just to keep him warm while spending all that time in water. And that would have burned a lot of excess calories too. All of these components together make up your total daily energy expenditure, or TDEE. And this is all the energy that you need to support the different parts of your metabolism. A lot of people simply call this your metabolic rate. Before I finish, no video on metabolism would be complete without talking about what you can do to increase your metabolic rate, right? I'll keep this brief. You technically can increase your metabolic rate by being bigger, and the most realistic way of doing that is by building more muscle. The thing is, more muscle, especially with the amount that most people can realistically build, is not going to increase your metabolism a whole lot. It does, however, have a small effect. The next thing you could do is work on your thermic effect of food. As I mentioned earlier, if you replace some of the fat and carbohydrate calories in your diet with protein, your TEF will be higher. But again, it's not going to be a really huge amount either. There is also some evidence that meals higher in whole, unprocessed foods have a slightly higher TEF compared to the same amount of calories from processed food. Again, it's going to be a very small effect. With meat, well, you can't really ask someone to fidget more, which means the last and probably best way to increase your metabolism is the last thing anyone wants to actually hear. Exercise, yeah. Surprise, surprise. You can also increase your metabolism by exercising more but not many people really want to do that. That's why when it comes to things like weight loss, it makes a lot more sense to focus on the calories inside of the equation. By that, I mean reducing how many calories you eat overall, but that's another video entirely. So did this answer your questions about metabolism? As always, if you have any more, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.